Hi, in this video we have an infinite series and we have to determine if it converges or diverges. And so basically when you look at something like this, you notice um, the tent at the end and that kind of makes you think of uh, a geometric series. So if it was like um, 1 over 10 to the n, it would be geometric. So the intuition is if you have 1 plus sine of n over 10 to the n, sine, it's between negative 1 and 1. So this is, you know, if you, could, if you ignore the sine function, um, this is approximately like 1 over 10 to the n, which is really 1 over 10 to the n. And if you take the sum of these terms, this is going to be a convergent geometric series. You can put a 2 here if you like, or any number. The point is that this is, you know, controlled uh, because sine is between negative 1 and 1. So this number is, you know, between 0 and 2. So you have a number between 0 and 2, and the bottom um, behaves kind of like a geometric series. So, yeah, that's the idea. So it should converge. So we just have to formally show it. So to do that, we're going to use something called the direct comparison test. Now, in the direct comparison test, one of the um, assumptions is that you have only positive terms. So note that this is always going to be positive. Um, sine here will never be equal to negative 1 because the only time that that happens is at, um, well, if you think about the unit circle, it'll happen here, 3 pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi, or 3 pi over 2 minus 2 pi, or 3 pi over 2 plus 4 pi, etc. It's never going to be that because n is an integer, so we don't have to worry about that. So this will always be positive. So basically what happens is, uh, for the direct comparison test, if you have a series a sub n, and you have a series uh, b sub n, and you know that a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n, I'll just say for all n, it can actually be true you know, for all n from some point on. And then these are both positive, a sub n and b sub n are positive. Then if, if the a's are smaller than the b's and the b's converge, then the a's also converge, right? So that's the idea. So we're gonna show that this has smaller terms than something that converges. So I'm gonna write it again so you can see it. So you have one, whoops, one plus sine n over 10 to the n. So these are going to be our a's, okay, in, in this direct comparison test. So you write it down. And when you're trying to show convergence, you basically want to show that this is less than or equal to, you know, the b's. And you want the sum of the b's to converge. So this is less than or equal to 1. So this is going to be 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, and um, this is the same thing as 2 times 1 over 10 to the nth power, right? So this is your b sub n in the test. And now you just have to explain why the sum of these converges. So this sum, as n runs from 0 to infinity, of 2 times 1 over 10 to the n converges... Uh, it's a convergent geometric series, so converges by the geometric series test. Since, and you should emphasize why, so this is your r, so r is 1 over 10, and it's less than 1. In absolute value and out of absolute value, it's less than 1. So basically you have that the terms of this series are less than or equal to the terms here uh, of this series, and the terms of this series, uh, if you add them up, uh, you get a conversion series by the geometric series test. So therefore, by the direct comparison test, that's what we're using here, this, this, this infinite series here converges. So sum from zero to infinity of one plus sine of n over 10 to the n converges. So the main point here is that when you're trying to show convergence using the direct comparison test, you take what's here and you want to show it's less than or equal to the terms of a convergent series. In this case, um, that in this case we used a geometric. It's not always the case. 
sometimes you can use like a p-series or something else but yeah i hope this has been helpful good luck